Hi, my name's Zapier, and I'm so good. I'm so good that I, that I've kind of been back. What I mean back is like moving back in the market, at least in my mind, because I found a really cool app called Relay.app, which is a magnifico masterpiece of an application that is 12 out of 10 would recommend. They did reach out to me and we do have a working relationship. So this is a sponsored video. However, these as an automation nerd are absolutely my opinions as to why really would be considered better than Zapier in 2024. Now, first and foremost, I will say mainly because I know how to say their app's name without questioning it. For example, I was informed by somebody a week ago that it's not pronounced Zapier, it's pronounced Zapier, which apparently rhymes with happier, which is not what I am when I'm using this application in comparison to Relay. Now, into the actual reasons. First and foremost, I'm just gonna call out the fact that this application has deeper integrations. Now, what does deeper integrations even mean? So if I go into an example workflow here, you'll see that it's very easy for me to set something up. I already have one set up here that's pretty awesome. It essentially showcases uh, my different Notion pages on my internal content calendar where it's filtered to the piece of content is scheduled and the publish date is about a week prior or later. And then from there, it could automatically update that page's status to published. Because the day after something scheduled, it was it's obviously going to need to be published, but I don't want to have to set this up manually. And it was very easy for me to set this up. So, so I'm going to just do it again to show you how quickly this can be done. So if I go here and I type start runs and batches, click recurring schedule, and then I'm going to select the source of this app to be Notion. And I'm going to do pages and then I just grab the database real quick that I showed you. So in my internal content calendar, then I'm going to filter it for only when the trigger ends up being a specific page or set of pages that match filters. Okay. Then I'm going to filter to the status is scheduled. You can either do one of if there's like multiple statuses or not one of if you don't want certain statuses or any other these other options here, like empty or not empty. And the publish date is minus and I'm just going to do seven days because uh, what if before I set this up, it uh, it done goofed and messed up. All right. All right, perfect. So one week before the trigger time. So it's just going to load it in a moment here and you'll see, boom, that same thing pops up. And if I click on this, it showcases all of the different data regarding this piece of content and all the different properties. Yes, I'm a madman. There's way too much stuff in my Notion workspace. Then all I would do after that is add a step that be Notion update page. I do essentially grabbing this value from here to this page and then the status would get set to published. All right. And for any of these different things, what I really like is I can actually test this step with a specific page if I'd like. I think that's actually pretty awesome. Like you can select whichever one you want. Um, like for example, the one that we see here is how to iterate on content ideas. Or we can just test the entire run. So if I press start a test run here and utilize the specific page like this one right here, it's so much easier than other applications because I can just simply click through that and pre press create test run. And then boom, it works. Once I press start run, running automation, page. This is the Notion link right here. If I open it up, oh, look at that. The status is published. Wow. So after this is complete, I'm, I just want to explain to you something really quick because there was some interesting data here. So there's iterator value and there's linked from. So when it comes to linked from, I can either obviously update this object or what's linked from other objects. So this is essentially referencing different relations and data from things like rollups. So it allows me to grab, for example, a subtask from this page rather than the page itself. That's insane to me because for all intents and purposes, I have never been able to just straight up update a field in a relation via it finding the link from. This is not a thing in Zapier. This is so difficult for them to do somehow, but this is amazing. We can update linked from items, these subtasks immediately. We could maybe even update things where this content has been repurposed from something. Say there's a short related to it and it's like, okay, we know the short is going to be published on the same day. So it would also just update the short. That's amazing. Why would we have to do another search for module or find anything else? We don't have to do that. We simply have it linked from and then ability to update that is awesome. Now in Zapier, you do have a bit of a different experience. It's not uncommon 
for you to essentially have to deal with connecting raw API field names. And first of all, it doesn't have relations or rollups from Notion. I just want to make that clear. And something very important to note about these different app objects, by the way, is that they mirror and reflect the exact data model of your applications, which is first and foremost awesome. Secondarily, they always contain all that dynamically linked data that I showcased to you here. And last but not least, this is the kicker. They're always up to date and in sync with the other application. You never need to refetch the data, right? This is a object that is connected indefinitely. So you don't have to search for it again, even when you're using wait steps for multiple hours or even days. So this is awesome. Very happy about this, but some other great parts about this, you have the ability to split paths like you do in Zapier, but you also with flow control can make rule based paths that eventually go back together, right? So after common steps occur, you can unite. This is something that I'd never expect that you could see. You can only split things out inside of Zapier, not combine them again. So for example, say I were to send a Slack message after this, right? I would just send a, as you can see right here, we just send to Slack channel, right? Say it's going to be updates based on tasks completed, whether it be for BAU or can do another one, which is like Slack message, Slack, send to channel, and then task completed or task to do BAU, right? So let's say the rule would be if this is a content type, is original content, right? And then you could have different ones on both sides, right? But essentially you're just filling out the content here, like, oh, message, say it has the name of the piece of content, right? Afterwards, you can make a different step for creating a page or something that's uh, just, for example, from the message here, right? And you'll notice this is from either message, mattering on which one is sent via which path actually worked, right? So if you have it like, parallel pathing with two different options, but essentially just changing some minor things you then at the end, you can then loop it back together with the same kind of step, just utilizing the data from which of these two paths ran, which is not possible in Zapier. It's insanely cool. Another really great thing you can do in here is an iterator, for example. So if we go to the flow control and type iterator, what we can do is we can essentially grab from this page. There's a lot of subtasks that are going to come out of this. And something that I want to do as well is if we go to the RP subtask section here, I want to essentially for every item in this list, I want to make something pretty, pretty solid here as an update, which would be, I want to update these pages so that for the iterator, right? All of the subtasks are checked off. Right? So for example, if I take the checkbox here and I select yes, okay? There are instances in where people on the team will essentially just not check something off, but maybe they mark it as scheduled. But when it gets changed to published, obviously I'm gonna wanna have all of the different tasks checked off because like the thing is done, let's just automatically check it off, right? So you'll notice here that basically both of these tasks, for example, say I forgot to check it off, uh, the other person here forgot to check it off as well. In this iterator, what would happen, it was going to just change it to published and that's fine. But another great step that I'm gonna showcase here is, let's do a, a test run of this, right? And we're gonna use it for this item. Press create test run. It is going to essentially, if we press start run, as a test, you'll notice running iterations on two pages, record podcast, boom, that's the first reference, right? So the first one is done. You'll see that that's checked off now. And the second one is about to be done here. So running automation as well. And in a few seconds, boom, schedule content is complete. The entire automation is complete and then everything is checked off and done. Now, you may be asking the question, uh, excuse me, is this not the greatest thing you've ever seen? Yes, it is. Because the fact of the matter is in Zapier, I can't connect to a relation, right? I can't even connect to update the status of, the, of one thing that it's related to, let alone iterating and looping the process of just checking off everything in the tasks. I think that's... That's awesome. And obviously I would go back to that workflow and make sure that for that, I would just also add that notion update page, the page right here and the status would get updated to published, right? So then I would essentially go through, update the page to be published, update all the different subtasks, and then everything 
would be complete and this would have been marked as published as well if I set up the automation fully. Now there's another really cool thing that happens and I'm very appreciative of this because as a business owner, I wish I could <laughs> make some things automated, but there is like one step that always needs to be human and manual. So lucky for us, we have human in the loop, which is really cool. This essentially forces you to send out something to people on the team, whether it be get approval to continue the run, get some data input, like filling out a form, asking someone to complete a task or manually selecting a path. And then after this happens, so my favorite would be just Slack DMing myself like, hey, is this ready to be marked as published, right? When this is the case, what ends up happening is if I send a Slack DM to myself, I get a DM from the Relay app and it says, hey, is this ready to be published? And if I press approved, and then it would open it up in Relay app since it's a test, but essentially after that is marked as approved, guess what? The content would get marked as published because I approved it. Now, you might be saying, what? And yes, I would say the same thing. This is absolutely nuts. I have never seen a platform that has allowed you to add a human element to automation. That's always been the knock, right? So you can not only have the human in the loop for just getting approval, but data input. This is a great option as well. So Slack, DMing, for example, I'm gonna say it's assigned to uh, me. And the data requested can be anything. It can be text, like content name, uh, yes or no is an option. So like a checkbox. So is this ready to publish? And something along the lines of publish dates. So say someone were to get sent this, right? So let's preview this Slack message. We could have a workflow automation where I fill it out and then the automation runs. Say for example, I'm doing an intake form request or something to that effect with content. And I want to have it as a part of the workflow that after a content idea has been inputted, I myself am approving as to whether, hey, is this supposed to end up on the content calendar or not? When is this supposed to be published? Those sort of things. This requires some human input sometimes. And for me, I know that this is something that can't be done inside of Zapier. I know it can't be done inside of Make. I know it can't be done inside of pretty much any platform. But what we have here with Relay is some majorly big features. I am really excited to try it out to show them to you in future videos. So if you wanna see more from this, I'm actually gonna showcase some instances where this could be a great use case for Notion. Please be on the lookout for the video. Thanks again to Relay for sponsoring this video. And check out this video on how to improve your skills using Notion and tools like this to power Notion even more.